Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf. What got you into playing Magic the Gathering? Was it like me because your friends were playing? Was it also like me because you found the game to be intellectually stimulating? Was it because of the art? Was it because of some celebrity you know, someone you saw on YouTube, for instance, that got you into the game? It's different for different people, right? But if you've been in the game for long enough, you've probably decided that you want to get better as a player, right? And while there are people that are casual enough that they don't feel that drive, and that's perfectly fine, I'm not saying, I'm not making a normative statement, right? There are a lot of people like myself that play the game to get better at the game. Again, for a number of reasons. For me, it was a positive feedback loop. Once I got to a certain understanding of the game, I started winning. And so, I wanted to get better at the game so that I win more. And when I did, I won more. And this positive feedback loop made me the player that I am now. I'm still not world class, obviously. I still kind of fall asleep in the middle of matches. I still see new angles when I play, but that's a reason for me. But for different people, uh, you might have, you know, one of their friends is getting into it more competitively, so they want to, or they want to understand the game on a more theoretical, a more fundamental level, or they want the game to better improve their mentality, their intellectual capacity. I know that an old way that they tried to get players more invested in the game is through something called the Invitational Tournament. You know Dark Confidant? Yeah, that's Bob Marr, that's a real person. You know Snapcaster Mage? That's Tiago Chan. Who is John Finkel? Well, in addition to possibly the best Magic player in the world, with only a small number of players even being up there, Kai, I'm looking at you, he's also Shadow Mage Infiltrator. And by the way, while I'm at it, here's just the list of all of them. I'm not gonna say all of their names because I'm really worried that I'm going to mispronounce some. Especially you. Sylvan Safekeeper. What this allowed players to do is aspire to one day become their own card. I've had conversations with players, even nowadays, that say, man, it would be awesome if I could get my own card. I wish I could have participated in those invitationals. Unfortunately, they're not being run anymore. But that's the idea. You get to have a fantasy. You get to look into the clouds and say, that's going to be me one day. But let me give you a reason that's true for a lot of people, especially in Magic the Gathering. I don't see this in a lot of other games, not to anywhere near the extent that I see it in Magic. For a lot of you, you know that I play Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh! on a super competitive level, and there's a good reason for that. In Magic, pretty much exclusively, as far as paper trading card games go, you can become a professional Magic the Gathering player. Now, I'm not talking about streaming. That is true, you can be a pro streamer, not just for card games, but for a lot of esports, right? But in Magic the Gathering, in just paper, you can become a professional player. You can get into the Pro Tour Hall of Fame, you can become a Platinum player, and Magic would actually pay you, I say Magic, Wizards, Wizards of the Coast, would actually pay you, used to be $3,000 per appearance at a Pro Tour. That's awesome, right? Isn't that pretty incredible, getting paid $3,000 to attend a Pro Tour? Plus, you get more if you're in the Hall of Fame. It's what's called an appearance fee. Basically, Wizards isn't dumb. They're not doing that because they just want to give people money. As Saffron Olive more or less put it, the Pro Tour isn't just the professional tour. It's also the promotional tour. And the reason for that is that when you watch an event, when you watch a Pro Tour, say, on stream, it indirectly is supposed to get you to buy more cards. Look at these professionals. Look at LSV, Kick Butt. Look at Reed Duke being the Duke, Tom Ross being the boss. Look at these players win events with these new cards, these shiny new cards that just came out in the most recent set. In the case of standard Pro Tours, which, on a side note, is why Wizards cares more about standard Pro Tours than modern Pro Tours, but that's that's been talked to death by a lot of other people, so enough about that, right? But they are there to make you want to buy more cards, right? And so, Wizards more than makes their money back by putting Platinum Pro players out at these events. That's why they pay them, it used to be $3,000 per appearance. They expect to get well more than that in return. 
Unfortunately for a lot of pro players, and those who want to become professional, the appearance fee for Platinum Pro and Pro Tour Hall of Fame players is being cut down. It's being dropped to less than 10% of what it used to be. And that's pretty big, right? I mean, think about that for just a moment. That means that if you are the kind of player that aspires to one day live the dream and play a game professionally, the chances of you being able to do that are not as high as they used to be. And as a result, a lot of players just aren't going to invest as much time in Magic the Gathering. Not as much as they would have. I see commenters on YouTube say, this isn't really that big of a deal, right? I mean, this isn't relevant to most players. And directly, that's right, it's not. 99.99, some number of nines, percent of players aren't going to be affected by this at all, right? That's certainly true, but the trick is, a lot of players that want to get to that level will be affected by it. It means that you aren't going to be able to live the dream in all likelihood. Magic the Gathering is about to become and I hate to say this, because I really like the game, but I dislike this aspect of it. Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh has pretty much no professional scene, here in the United States at least. In the TCG, I can't speak to the OCG, but at least in the TCG, there just isn't one. And the reason is because there is no cash circuit. You can't be a Platinum Pro at Yu-Gi-Oh. That's just not how it works. You may be someone like Corey McDuffie, who, by the way, shout-outs to Corey McDuffie, he's great at both Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! This dude is insane, right? Because he gets both games on such a fundamental level. But a player like Corey can still get sponsored by a store. He works at Super Games, Inc. Shout-outs to Super Games, Inc. But that's really it. Unless you're getting sponsored by a store, to a very large extent, you can't play the game for a living. Even I, at my skill level, have been sponsored by a store to a very, 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 very minor degree. Although, in that case, I was just getting the shirt. It's, hey, wear the shirt and you get to keep it. Which is cool, that's awesome, and I'm flattered that they thought that I was good enough to represent the store, but I'm under no illusion that I'm ever going to be able to make a living doing something like that. Sorry, that's just not how it works. In a previous video of mine, I stated that a lot of people get into a game like Magic the Gathering because they see it as a good investment. Well, this argument is actually along very similar lines. It's not an investment in the cards themselves, it's the investment in time that matters, and effort. Life is sort of a zero-sum game in a way. What time you lose playing a card game could have been spent doing something else, or nothing but that means that you're never getting that time back. If you want to put all of this time and energy into becoming a professional player, you hope to get something out of that, right? There aren't really professional Hearthstone players, right? I mean, there are. It's becoming an eSport, and there are starting to be players. But which one are you more likely to make money off of? Twitch? <laughs> Streaming? Or becoming a pro Hearthstone player and winning tournaments? The former, certainly. Hearthstone, though, is a game that's made, frankly, with streamers in mind. That's why the UI is set such that it makes it more engaging, it's more colorful, you can do more distracting things on the screen. I mean, if you ever want to just, just click a random anything on the screen, right? It gives you something interactive, it's titillating, right? The game is made for that purpose. Magic always, to me, seemed like the game that comes wearing the suit, right? It's the game that's meant to be serious, but it offers you something serious in return. You can play Magic extremely casually, and there's something certainly fun in that, right? But this gave you an option that a lot of other card games could not give you. Now that's gone. Does it affect you directly? Probably not, right? I don't imagine that the majority of Magic players will be, in one way or another, losing any sleep over this. But it's possible, right? It's possible that for people that wanted to aspire to play the game for a living, which by the way still blows my mind. It blows my mind enough that people can make a living on YouTube, let alone playing a game professionally. Outside of the realm of sports, of traditional sports.
And some players, yes, are going to leave the game. Some professionals are going to leave altogether or downgrade to becoming casual players. Brian Kibler, for instance, has already been streaming Hearthstone for quite some time. And it wouldn't be that hard for him to just do it full time, right? He can make quite a bit off of streaming, even if he doesn't really even win tournaments. I mean, it looks like Yuya Watanabe is getting out of the game. On Twitter he said, GG Pro Magic, let's go next game. But more importantly for Wizards of the Coast, the trick is that now fewer players want to invest as heavily in the game as they would have otherwise. It also means that there aren't going to be as many players that people recognize on the Pro Tour, which may mean that they're not actually going to make quite as much money. There are people like me that watch Pro Tours at least to an extent, to see certain players. I like watching Tom Ross, Reed Duke, Stanislav Sivka. Those are my big three. But Wizards of the Coast isn't doing this because they're dumb. They're taking a gambit. You see, when they decrease the Pro Tour and Hall of Fame appearance fees, what do they increase? The World Cup prize payout. Over the next two years, you're going to see the first place prize for the World Cup get all the way up to $100,000. The money that they're saving from these appearance fees is going all into this big pot. Now, if you're trying to play the game professionally, you need more consistency. You can't assume that you're going to be the one guy, right? That doesn't make any sense. As Martin Juza put it, and forgive me if I'm saying your name incorrectly, this is like at work, your boss telling you your salary gets cut 90%, but if you win Employee of the Year, you will get 1 million. And that's right, that consistency is an issue, right? If you're going to try to be a professional player, you can't bet on being the one guy. You need a guarantee. But, if you're an aspiring player and you see a big number, maybe that makes you want to play the game more. Not because you're trying to play the game for a living, but because you're seeking that prize. Will it be as exciting as the Invitational cards? I don't know. Extra Credits made a great video, by the way, about how, with respect to the lottery, they decreased the odds of your winning, but in exchange, they made the game more attractive. Wait, what? Now you're less likely to win, so there's that irrationality, but you're more likely to play? Why would you do that? And the reason is because this allows you to have bigger numbers, right? People can look up and think, instead of just saying, I could win a million dollars, or ten million dollars, they say, I can win a hundred million dollars. And that causes more people to want to play unless they realize that the odds are actually worse for them now. They say that the lottery is a tax on people who are bad at mathematics. Well, this irrationality actually turns out to work. More people want to play because they see the bigger number. Most people don't realize that the odds are actually worse for them now. What's happened in Magic is essentially the same thing. You're more likely now, if you do win at a given event, the World Cup, to make a lot more money. But you're less likely to be able to make a smaller but steadier amount of money playing the game. Maybe that actually works out better for Wizards of the Coast. Maybe. At least they're trying it out. And unfortunately, they're probably not going to change their minds unless we let them know. How do you get them to change their mind? Make your voice heard. Make your thoughts known. You can shoot them an email to the address that I've given below, and let them know if you don't like it, that you don't like it. And again, for most people, this isn't actually going to matter, right? For most people, this is not going to affect them at all, because most players are never getting to see that money. But if you ever want to have a chance to make $3,000 per appearance, to potentially make a living off of playing the game that you love, then you need something like this. Is this necessary for Magic to be a great game? Almost certainly not. Lots of other trading card games, including Yu-Gi-Oh!, again, don't have any professional scene, and they're great games to play. Yu-Gi-Oh! gets a lot more promotion from the TV show, so maybe that's a bit of an exception. They don't need a promotional tour. They don't need a pro tour. And if you're like me, and you don't expect that you're ever going to be that good of a player, that you're never going to be a platinum pro, you're never going to be able to make a living off of playing the game at tournaments, I mean, I still want the game to be this way. 
simply because it enables other people to do so. It may not affect me, but it affects somebody out there. As Brian Kibler put it, None of this really impacts me at all since I'm not pursuing pro magic seriously, but I'd rather see it be a real option for those who do. So those are my two cents for whatever they're worth. As always, whatever thoughts you have, feel more than free to leave them in the comments below, although please keep them constructive, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.